Hi, it's Corrine for Wild Orchid Crafts, and I'd like to share this project with you today. I do have a quick video that I will play here in a moment of me showing how I put this together. For the base of my cake, I used this Craftsmith Cool Neutrals color that I got from Michaels. Really pretty color. And I used a cut file from Lori Whitlock, which I will be sure to link down in the description box along with lots of gorgeous flowers and pearls from Wild Orchid Crafts. So be sure to check the description box. I'll also link the Wild Orchid Craft products on my blog as well. So each of these are a little cake box. I got the file, as I mentioned, from Lori Whitlock, and I used my Cameo to score and cut it out. You can use your Cricut machine. If you don't have an electronic die cutting machine, you can simply print out her files, trace them, and cut them out by hand. They're very simple to do. So in my video, I do show how to put this file together in case you have one and you're not quite sure how to do so. 10 of these make up a whole pie, and these are great for centerpieces for a birthday, an anniversary party, a wedding, and you can put little um, candies or treats in them. I used a coordinating color to put on the inside. For the bottom, I did finish off the bottom as well. I just used some heavy white cardstock. And then I used some beautiful open roses, an ivory rose, and a sweetheart blossom, along with these rose leaves and some self-adhesive pearls, all from Wild Orchid Crafts. On the edge of my cake, I used a die cut using my silhouette, uh, a silhouette file, so I'll be sure to link that as well. And then this heart flat back embellishment from Wild Orchid Crafts. This entire project probably took me about two hours to put together. I just put on a movie and glued it all together. It was very simple, very relaxing, and very fun. It's gonna make a great centerpiece. So I hope you stay tuned. I hope you've enjoyed today's project. If you have any questions, leave me a comment and please check out Wild Orchid Crafts for all their amazing products. Thanks so much for watching. Okay, so to put this together, if you have your Cricut or Cameo cut it out, which you do not have to have a Cricut or a Cameo, you can purchase Lori Whitlock's file, print it out yourself, trace it, and cut it out. So you can do this by hand. You don't have to have a die cutting machine to do this. If you do have one, it makes it very simple. You're going to get this piece, which is going to be the bottom of your pie box. And although it may be hard to see on camera, the score lines are already in there, which I will fold on those in a second. This piece, and these were cut from a 12 by 12 piece of paper. You can size them down if you need to cut it out on eight and a half by 11. And this is going to be the top of your pie box. You're also going to get four triangles here. One, two of them are going to be for the inside of your top and the bottom of your box. So here is what we're making. This one's a little bit smaller, but you're gonna get the triangle piece for the top of your lid on the outside and on the inside for the bottom of your pie on the inside and the outside as well. And the lid just fits right on there. So to show you how we do this, you just simply wanna go ahead and fold on the score lines. I like to then use my bone folder to get a good crease on some of it. I don't do it on all these little tab pieces. Just follow those score marks. This is going to be your little glue tab right here. I don't use my bone folder on these as well. I just kind of crease them there. And now we're going to simply glue this little tab piece over to this piece. I like to use wet glue. You can use whatever you're comfortable with. The wet glue gives you a second to maneuver it and kind of move it around if you need to. And you do want to line this up nicely. It's going to, it's going to make a difference on how nicely your little pie box turns out. I'm using Scotch Quick Dry. It does dry clear. Okay, and now I'll just set that aside and start on the lid doing the exact same thing. Go ahead and fold on your score lines. 
these are going to be little glue tabs. And you're going to have one there and it's going to also score and fold here as well to form the shape. So add glue to your little glue tab here. I like to make sure it's on both corners. And line that up perfectly. So again, I'll set that aside and go back to this one. The next thing you want to do is add the piece inside your box because that's going to help form it perfectly. So you're going to get four triangle pieces. And as you can see, one is going to be slightly smaller. That's going to be for the bottom of your pie box. The little bit larger piece is going to be for the lid since the lid has to be slightly larger to fit over the top. So I cut this out in a contrasting color, a cream color. You, let me go ahead and put a piece of scratch paper under it and just go ahead and add glue around the entire outside of this. Now go ahead and kind of push it down in there and make sure that your box is formed around it. So you want a snug fit. You don't want it bowing out in, if you can avoid it. So I'm just kind of squeezing the bottom of the box and pressing down that inside piece. I'm going to use my bone folder to help press that down. Make sure it's in place. Go around all your corners, press it down. And hopefully it'll pick up on there. There's not big gaps between my bottom piece and the outside piece. You don't want big gaps. You want it to fit in there snug. So if you have to push your box in slightly to do so, that's what you want to do. And by using wet glue, it gives you a chance to uh, move it around like you need to. So this is going to be, being that you're not going to see it, I did just white for the bottom of my box. This is 110 pound cardstock, so I wanted to do a little bit heavier weight just to add to the stability of my box. So I'll let that sit for just a minute. I'll go back to this one and do this one. And I'm doing the same color on the inside of this one. So again, I'm going to add quite a bit of glue. I want to make sure to get all my edges though. I'm not worried about glue seeping out. And just kind of, again, tuck that in there and push it around to make sure it is a snug fit. So I'll press in my sides if I need to. And this is not so snug, so I'm going to press that in to make sure it's pushed right up against that inside piece. And again, I'm working back and forth, just giving these a chance to dry in between. If these are lifted up, go ahead and add a little bit of glue under them. You don't have to do this, but I like to do it. I'm not going to worry about it adhering right now because I'll be pressing the next piece on in just a second. So here is my bottom piece, adding my glue all the way to the edges. And actually, I add it to the center as well, being that it's gluing all the way down to the paper on this one. You can do the same color as your box if you choose. You don't necessarily see the bottom, but of course you want it to be a finished piece. So make sure all those edges are pressed down. After I've pressed it down, I like to go in and really put some pressure on it from the inside with my bone folder. Okay. And now I'm going to do the same thing with the top of my pie box or cake. 
place. I keep saying pies. I guess it's probably a cake. These are great to hold little embellishments, little candies. They're great for party favors, a centerpiece of a table. Press that down, wipe off any extra glue. I have a tissue here that I keep wiping it in off on. And if you don't press down these sides, they tend to want to come up, so make sure you're really pressing them down. Again, go on from the inside as well. And now we have our finished pie box. So we will continue on decorating the rest of it. Mm -hmm.